Today, Binance U.S. tells a court that freezing its assets would put it out of business. Republican lawmakers introduce a bill to fire Gary Gensler. And Brett Quick from the Crypto Council for Innovation weighs in on the SEC's crackdown on crypto exchanges. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Pippa Stevens. Digital currencies holding relatively steady after that weekend sell-off we told you about yesterday. Bitcoin's trading around the $26,000 level, and Ether is still trading around the $1,700 mark. Polygon's also on the move today, as another crypto exchange says it will delist the token. eToro announcing it will take Polygon off its platform on July 12th, along with Algorand, Decentraland, and Dash, due to the rapidly evolving regulatory landscape in the U.S. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First up, Binance U.S. says the SEC's attempt to freeze its assets would pretty much put the company out of business. A day after the SEC's lawsuit into claims that Binance operated an unregistered securities exchange and misled investors over risk controls, the agency asked a court to freeze the company's U.S. assets. It argued that the move was necessary to protect customer funds because Binance and Binance U.S. had disregard for U.S. law and regulatory oversight. Now, Binance U.S. said federal court approval of that request would be draconian and argued that it would effectively end its business. The company also said such a move would mostly hurt its customers. One other thing to point out in that filing, Binance's U.S. lawyers now include George Canellos, the former co-director of the SEC's Enforcement Division. And sticking with the SEC, House Republicans just introduced a bill to remove Chair Gary Gensler. Congressman Warren Davidson of Ohio, who's been a strong supporter of crypto, announced on Twitter that he filed the SEC Stabilization Act, which would restructure the agency by adding another commissioner and dividing work evenly. Plus, fire Gary Gensler in the process. House Majority Whip Tom Emmer helped introduce the bill, and in a statement, he said that American investors deserve, quote, clear and consistent oversight, not political gamesmanship. We reached out to the SEC and a spokesperson declined to comment. Last, Hong Kong wants to lure Coinbase to the region amid all the uncertainty here in the States. Hong Kong Council member Johnny Ng tweeted that he offered an invitation to all digital asset trading operators, but called out Coinbase by name. That invitation comes after Hong Kong opened up its applications for licenses to operate in the region back on June 1st and restructured its rules to lay out firm guidelines for what is and isn't allowed in the crypto space. All right, for our main story, we are sticking with crypto companies moving overseas. Crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with Brett Quick, the head of government affairs at the Crypto Council for Innovation, about the push from crypto companies to expand offshore or completely leave the U.S. market amid the SEC's heightened crackdown on the industry. So we saw some major headlines last week with the SEC charging crypto exchanges Binance and then Coinbase, alleging both failed to register as an exchange, broker dealer or clearing agency. The agency also charged the companies with selling unregistered securities. Now, the case against Binance, in that case, the SEC accused the exchange and its CEO of inflating trading volumes, diverting customer funds and misleading customers. Do you think more crypto companies should be on alert now? What do you think the latest enforcement actions mean for the industry as a whole? Well, unfortunately, Talia, we're seeing more regulation by enforcement, more of the same that we've been seeing for years now. You know, since 2013, the SEC has brought 127 enforcement actions against crypto companies, but they've yet to carry out a single formal rulemaking to provide clarity and reduce some of the ambiguity around how securities laws apply to digital assets and to exchanges like this. Um, you know, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, Binance and Coinbase, of course, we, we saw these announcements, these headlines last week, but very different allegations and different complaints against the two companies. You know, Binance and, and CZ uh, allegedly, you know, misled investors about the exchange's ability to really detect market manipulation um, and misused customer funds. So, um, we're talking about two different cases, but certainly seeing more uh, regulation by enforcement, which, you know, for CCI's perspective, uh, we have long been, you know, advocating for a regulatory framework, um, which would create clarity and transparency in advance, because the reality is that what regulation by enforcement fails to do, it fails to protect consumers and investors. It fails to prevent potential bad actors from really taking advantage of interest in the space and accessing the marketplace. 
Um, and then it fails to create, you know, clarity and transparency for the good actors in the space who want to, gr to grow and develop here in the United States and create jobs and, you know, ultimately economic growth associated with that. What do you make of SEC Chair Gary Gensler's argument that most crypto assets, with the exception of Bitcoin, are securities and that they should be subject to securities laws? In fact, today, documents tied to William Hinman, the former director of the SEC's Division of Corporation Finance, were released to the public in connection with the agency's lawsuit against Ripple. The documents reveal that in a 2018 speech, Hinman suggested that he didn't think Bitcoin and Ether were securities. What does this mean for Gensler's argument that most crypto assets are securities? Well, you know, Chairman Gensler has been a little bit inconsistent on this. Um, certainly, he has acknowledged that Bitcoin is is not a security in his view. Um, in the case of Ether, he hasn't even been able to answer that. The last time he testified before Congress um, a few months ago, he was asked repeatedly if he believes Ether is a security and he refused to answer, um, which from a from a regulator's perspective, that's that's a really hard um, uh, thing to understand that you have the chairman of the SEC who can't c confirm or deny whether or not something is in fact a security. You know, unfortunately, what we're seeing with this current SEC um, is what seems to be a view that everything is a security and therefore, uh, you know, should technically fit into the existing securities laws, even though the business models um, are not consistent with, you know, laws that were created uh, in many cases, 90 years ago, um, that could not have contemplated the speed at which transactions can occur now, certainly did not account for the advent and, and use of the internet, um, and, you know, require a lot of intermediaries, intermediaries for, for custody, for clearing, for settlement, for order matching, um, things that blockchain technology um, make, you know, less necessary in the current structure. Um, and those intermediaries, of course, are are there, were originally there in existing securities laws to mitigate risk, but the technology that we have now is really not consistent with the need for those. Um, so what you start to assume is that it, really what Chairman Gensler supports is an effective ban on crypto, because the fundamental question is whether or not you know we want to make accommodations in existing securities laws um, and regulation of digital assets so that companies can develop and prosper here in the United States, or if we want those companies to move overseas, where Chairman Gensler himself has acknowledged that it's much more difficult uh, to regulate and to bring enforcement actions against offshore exchanges. So expanding on that, EU lawmakers approved the world's first comprehensive framework for crypto regulation in April. And just yesterday, crypto-friendly VC firm Andreessen Horowitz announced it's expanding outside the U.S. by opening a new office in the U.K., citing the region's crypto regulation as the reason. Specifically, the managing partner of A16Z's crypto unit said the UK was working constructively with the industry and is still protecting consumers. Can we expect to see more companies expand overseas as Europe moves forward with its push for regulatory clarity? What does the US need to do to keep these firms here? Sure, I think that's exactly what we should expect to see. You know, we've seen Coinbase obtain a license in Bermuda. Um, as you mentioned, A16Z setting up a London shop. What was really interesting is that you saw a statement from uh, the prime minister in the UK that was really welcoming A16Z, embracing um, the industry and sort of reaffirming the desire to make the UK uh, a hub for Web3, which they've been you know, very uh, clear that that's their goal. Um, in the United States, we have a very different dynamic where we have an administration, unfortunately, and regulators who do not seem interested in creating a regulatory framework that is clear for companies to operate here. Um, I think the the latest numbers are that 70% of the, the top 30 exchanges, crypto exchanges um, in the world, all have uh, licenses in foreign jurisdictions. So I think, unfortunately, we're going to start to see more companies think about where they should domicile in a place where they, they have some of this regulatory clarity uh, that they just unfortunately do not have here in the United States. So in general, what do you think lawmakers here in the U.S. need to focus on when it comes to crypto? What should be their top priority? And is it too late for the U.S. to catch up to other parts of the world like Europe at this point? Well, there's no question that the U.S. is behind. Um, you know, we just discussed uh, Mika and the U.K. There's other, you know, Hong Kong, Australia. There's a lot of jurisdictions who are really working to embrace the technology and the innovation and, and the growth that comes with all of it, um, to say nothing of China and, and the things that they're doing to sort of exert soft power globally through the technology. 
Um, so the U.S. is definitely behind. I don't think it's too late. I think it's encouraging that we're seeing um, some really good faith efforts in Congress amongst lawmakers to to really thoughtfully put together comprehensive regulatory frameworks. You know, today we'll see uh, a hearing on the market structure legislation that was released jointly by the House Financial Services Committee and House Agriculture Committee. Um, so they're putting in the work. I think that, um, you know, a, a comprehensive bill is complicated and there are going to be pain points that come with that. And industry has to sort of understand that. Um, but there needs to be clarity on what is a security? What is a commodity? What is something else? How can these companies with their existing business models and the technology that you know underpins them, how can they register and be compliant with regulation? Um, so I think those conversations are ongoing, but there's a lot of work to be done. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we are back again tomorrow and we'll see you then. Mm-hmm.